Come, Holy Spirit, and enkindle within us the fire of your burning love. In your blessed name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Seated. And good morning. May I say how honored and how much fun I had yesterday for gaining your new DM Mike Stutzel. <laughs> I'm watching. <laughs> Sometimes, particularly this time of year, I find myself lost in the darkness of night, missing out on the solace of sleep, wandering around past midnight, trying to think deep thoughts, but instead reduced to replaying everything from the dead. Why did I say that? Or when am I ever going to get that done? And am I good enough? Did I remember about God today or just go through the day meeting to meeting, call to call, event to activity, looking only what is right in front of me or the next thing, and completely overlooking God's blowing spirit. And now it's three o'clock in the morning, and I have no good answers and even fewer hours of possible sleep. Does this ever happen to you? You find yourself feeling that way? It isn't the easiest of times right now. Everyone I know is tired. And the world, the world is a difficult place. There is a savage war in Ukraine, reverberating through our global economy. And what about our country? Will democracy hold? A, a question that I can't even have fathomed thinking six years ago. And will we, as a people of these United States, continue to petition ourselves into pools of polarities? Or will we begin to listen and to hear and to learn from each other? And will those of us who happen to have white skin tire of naming and dismantling systems and structures that make it decidedly harder for people with black and brown skins to be educated, respected, and to even be safe. And will, will all of us summon enough energy to tear down and consign these dire systems to the dung heaps, or will we claim to have done enough and let the sinful systems continue to simmer in our institutions and our communities and our, and our families. And here in Michigan, will we once and for all have the energy 
to sensibly alter our laws to save our children from being harmed or killed by misused guns. The single largest cause of accidental deaths for young people in the state of Michigan is now misused guns. It used to be cars, but we altered those laws. Sometimes, particularly this time of year, I find myself lost in the darkness of night and overwhelmed with shadows of fear and just a longing for that coming light. And I'm not the first person, and this is not the only time that people have been longing for a change. In the seventh century, before the Common Era, the prophet Isaiah said to a people about to be overrun by a foreign empire and on the verge of exile, the prophet Isaiah proclaimed and prophesied that the wilderness and the dry land will shall be glad and the desert shall blossom and bloom and a highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way and it shall be for all of God's people and no traveler, not even the fools, will go astray. And lo, it came to be, a way home for the people in exile who thought that they had been forsaken by our God in a foreign land were ushered back to their city on a hill and they began to slowly rebuild, relearn and renew, renew what it meant, as Isaiah said, to come to Zion with singing and everlasting joy upon their heads, and that they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. That's what Isaiah said. Think for a moment just how much time we spend sighing. And then, Several centuries later, before the birth of Christ, when the people again were oppressed by a foreign power, Mary of Nazareth, Mary of Nazareth proclaims to her elderly relative, Elizabeth, I rejoice in God, my Savior, for God has looked with favor upon me. God shows mercy and favor to everyone who from one generation to the next who honors him as God. And God has shown strength and scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations and pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things. He has come to aid the servant Israel. Mary says all of this she is a teenager. She is unmarried. She is pregnant. She says all of this to an elderly relative who also finds herself a child. Mary utters these words as if it's already happened. He has thrown them down. He has filled the hungry. In biblical theologian, Amy Jo Levine says, these are not words of a gospel of gain, we're going to get this and you're not going to get that, but rather a gospel of trust. Levine says, Mary speaks as if these events have already happened. And Levine says, because they have. They happen whenever those of us who have give to those in need she said, we see this when people, when there is a fidelity to the Torah and a faithfulness to the gospel, we see these miracles because as God's children, it is our responsibility to carry them out. We do this one for another. In this time, of dark nights and fractured souls, 
Joy comes in the morning. Hope and new life come when we understand God's call, God's beckoning for us to move beyond our fear and our sadness and to understand that we are not and we have never been in this on our own. Says Isaiah, strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful of heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God, and he comes with a vengeance, and he will come, and he will save you. Because, my friends, joy comes in the morning. Amen. Amen.